Hey, everybody, and welcome to the RGR Football Channel. My name is Daniel Harms, a film analyst here, and today we have a brand new film room for you guys, and I'm very excited about this one. Mike Dana was one of my one of my guys from last year. I was one of the guys that you know did most of the evaluation on him. I got finally got some of his film after the draft. I drafted him in the fifth round. I watched him at Central Michigan. I watched him at Michigan, and now they have him at defensive end. He's taking a step forward. That's what you want to see from your second year guys. And unfortunately for the Chiefs defense, he was the best player on defense on Sunday against the Chargers. Maybe it's not what you want to see from a total defensive standpoint. It's really, really good for Mike Dana because he's starting to show some things. He start The game's starting to slow down for him specifically, but you need to have more production out of everybody. But enough about that for now. Right now, we're going to focus on Mike Dana, who did a lot of very good things in this game against the Chargers all around. He's always been a pretty solid run defender has strength in his legs, transfers to his arms, and he can set the edge very well. I thought he came out back from a, a bad performance against the Baltimore Ravens to have a very solid, very, very good performance against the Los Angeles, Char Los Angeles Chargers. So let's go ahead and get into the film and really see what we can do uh, going forward and hoping Mike, Mike Dana can continue to project as he's done. So first I want you to see, we're going to start off just as a basic understanding play. You just need to know to do your job. So Mike Dan is down here at the bottom of your screen, and we're just going to watch it through and see what we can get all the way into this into this clip. So again, what I want you to focus on is just him doing his job, okay? This is very, very important, getting down the line on these, these types of plays. The key here is the understanding and locating the football for everybody up front. So eyes... You're going to see, not you, these four players are the key to this play. Rashad Fenton ends up being more of a trail defender, just coming over and filling that gap. But Tyron Matthew, Nick Bolton, and, and Mike Dana, that's a three, not a two. And Mike Dana are the three main components to this play. And I, I do believe that Anthony Hitchens is either telling, you know, Bolton to stay States, keep your eyes on that side for the comeback. This is something that the Chiefs do a lot in practice. They do a lot of this stuff, period. So just having these reverses come through, you just want to watch what happens. So here, again, flow, flow. Everyone's flowing back. You see that the actual understanding of where the football is going. Like, you see the football, see the football. And then you don't have to necessarily see it to understand where the ball is going. So again, good job here from Nick Bolton to get down and scrape underneath this block from Rayshon Slater. You're going to have Matthew Fenton all come back to this side. But again, this comes back to Mike Dana also just seeing where the football is. You see, he locates this football, and then that's when he really starts to get, get going. He's not the fastest guy in the world. He's not the most athletic guy in the world. But again, this is perfect. This is a perfect situation. Outside, outside of the block, trailer just coming in to finish this off. Just do your job type of defense. That's all that they want to be able to do. It's all they got to be able to do. And again, like I said, it's a simple, simple play. But Mike Dana does a very good job of finding the football right there, seeing it, readjusting, locating. He's not going to be the fastest guy in the world. Don't need to be to just do your job. Again, I like, I'm going to shout out Nick Bolton and Matthew for that play. And I'm going to get my soapbox a little bit here. We're going to stop talking about Nick or about Mike Dana for a second. And I want you to watch Dan Sorensen right here. Okay. This is Dan Sorensen. And for guys who are supposed to be lauded for being on the field and knowing what to do, look where the football is going. And everyone's trailing this way. It takes him an, another second and a half to realize where the football is going. If this gets to the edge, if it would ever to have gotten to the edge, you want to know what happens? Jalen Guyton's going to make him miss an open field or just get to the get to the end zone. So I'm very upset that he's still playing over more snaps than Juan Thornhill. We're going to get to that for the game plan. Don't worry, it's coming. But right now, back focus on Mike Dana, who is down here at the bottom of the defensive line formation. This is where he's starting to add some things to his game, understanding some leverages situations, and that's the next key component in becoming a more productive player in the NFL. So we're going to go through this play and then we'll just kind of squeeze on back. Just ignore the gigantic play from the chargers here, so, because what I want to, I want you to, to focus on specifically is imagine in this situation, 
that the Chiefs defend it properly and they don't leave one guy just coming out to the flat and being unblocked. But just don't, just like I said, just just ignore the the running back for a second if you can. It's not easy. I understand. I've had to watch this play over a ton. Watch as a good job right here of condensing that line down, getting down, pushing that offensive tackle down, maybe make him fall over, just doing your job on the play action fake. Locating the football is next. Something he does very well. Again, locates the football. He does see that you've got this puller coming out this way. So he's going to use this to his advantage, right? You have an understanding that he's going to kind of be in space. You're one-on-one -on -one with a man in space, okay? So he's going to use a little bit of an outside step right here and then use his quickness and swipe his hands to the outside while he's coming to the inside, just leaves that blocker with nowhere to go. Now, again, like I said, imagine that the running back's not there. This is a home-free pressure and probably a sack or at least a an in, 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 incompletion or a very, very small gain if that, if that running back is covered. It, it's just – it's important to see – that even though it's a big play, these are the flashes that we're talking about with Mike Dana. He does the right thing. Uh, this is It's just so important. You have that guard coming out in space, one-on-one, -on -one, manipulates him perfectly with just a little bit of footwork. You see, look, just look at that little bit of footwork. This is It's beautiful. It arms up, swipe away. You have this now from the offensive guard who's come over. Perfect situation for Dana to just get into this gap he does an excellent job of manipulating in open space then swiping the hands and just getting home free that's what you need to have for these defensive ends specifically because mike dana is going to be a guy that gets one-on-one -on -one looks more as the season goes along so it was nice to see that happen for him in this game specifically now into the run game a little bit here's mike dana at the very end of this this, this front here and i want you to just watch him completely blow this play up because without Mike Dana taking that extra offensive lineman into the backfield that doesn't happen this 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 doesn't actually happen and I if memory serves this play is huge to the entire way that this unfolds the, the Chargers are trying to score a touchdown here I think they only get a field goal because of the way that this play goes through Mike Dana is right like I said right here with this extra offensive lineman and he's going to push him right into the backfield Okay, and you know, 35 is going to score this touchdown if he's not standing up this block because he's just going to be able to jump through, right? Yeah, you only need to get two yards. But again, the ability to stand up this def this uh, offensive lineman and get him to have to jump too early and have to compensate for that is very important. It's very important to the outcome of this game, uh, this uh, this play, excuse me. But again, all about leverage. See, you can, you can see, you don't see him standing up here. This is not a play that you see Mike Dana getting all the way up here. He's going to get underneath this, this blocker and just forklift him up, right? It's perfect situation for him. It's a really, really great example of what you can do when you forklift. You get in there, you lift him up into the backfield, then you can start pushing with that leverage and understanding you have that momentum going forward. Use your legs to drive, and then it forces the running back. I think this is Roundtree, just to have to try to make a play before he was ready to. It's an excellent job of using your strength and getting a, a zero yard gain on a, a first and goal or whatever so goal situation. So, excellent job in the run game using that strength to his advantage and getting that extra offensive lineman into the backfield and blowing that play up. It's a very, 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 very huge step in his development for me, in my opinion. Now coming down, you have him again to the left side of the defensive formation. All of this is relentless effort now because Mike Dana used to play a lot just of effort plays. Everything he came was from effort. Like everything that he did was from effort. This is the kind of stuff that you really look at. And this is the the sack that we all remember, the huge sack from Mike Dana. And yes, is a, it's a relentless sack. Don't get us wrong, but there's a lot of technical skill in this as well. So let's go ahead and go forward because initially he's going to have the attention of three guys. <laughs> so we got three blockers right here, right? And each one of them is going to take in mind that, okay, someone else has him. I'm going to go somewhere else. And that continues to pay off for him. The defense does a great job on the back end. So you have five have to be able to break off for his route. The tackle 
comes down here on Derek Nottie, which he didn't really need to. And that's where Mike Dana is going to get his get his push, pull, just obliterates that tight end. And then this is key right here. Because we all know that Justin Herbert has an arm. And if anybody's open, kind of open, he's going to find a way to release that football. So again, you want him to bring that ball down. Dana gets his hands up, realizing that he's going to have a chance at a sack here, okay? And, and then one thing, we're going to go forward really quickly here, okay? This is very important. Justin Her Herbert is a very athletic guy. He can make plays with his legs, but he wants to stay in the pocket. He wants to move around and make defenders miss to get the ball away. I think Aunt Dana understands this. So as he's going forward, he's going to hip sync really quickly right here and do some chopping of his feet. Normally, a lot of guys that are trying for that effort sack would be farther upfield than Mike Dana is right now. And that's exactly what you know Herbert thought was going to happen. So he steps just out of the way and up a little bit. And Dana does a great job of hip syncing, getting his feet choppy, and really is going to finish it off right there. Like that's the kind of stuff you love to see from a defensive standpoint and a defensive end standpoint. I really enjoy watching Mike Dana in this sack. It's a perfect explanation of a guy who's not just, you know, an effort guy, but is using some more tools to his advantage and understanding the situations as they're unfolding. So much goes into all of that time. Like that's a three year and a half second play. And he's able to use that push, that push pull. He's able to understand as Justin Herbert's coming out to his right to sink his hips a little bit to get down on that because he's going to be able to change his direction well enough to get to him so hats off on that sack it was really really good this in my opinion is the more impressive play you have Mike Dana down here at the bottom of your screen on Rayshon Slater has been the best tackle of the draft class so far and he's going to take him to, to work right here it's not going to get called because I don't know why. This was a fourth down play that would have should have come back. And you're going to see right here exactly why. We're going to run through it first. And, and then we're going to go a little bit slower so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Because this 100% this should have been a sack and then a fourth down. So, unfortunately, this did not end up being that way. But what I want you to notice here is, yeah, Rayshon Slater is excellent with his hands. Okay, And I think that this is just Dana being a better uh, this is better in this case. He didn't play Rayshon Slater a whole lot in this game, but right here, you can see this is typically not what you want, okay? This is very good for the offensive tackle. He can get his hand around your chest area in and around that neck-ish part. He can really control the, the situation. But for Mike Dana, this is actually a really good opportunity for him to show his hand work, right? So he's going to come down and a little bit of bend too, because this is something you don't really see. You're going to have the outside arm slap, and then he's going to rip through this right here. And this is where the hold is. You can see he's clearly holding Mike Dana, because if he doesn't, this is a sack, because he's actually going to be able to use his inside hand, rebalance himself, and get that sack. He was able to do it the whole way through the hold. So unfortunately for the Chiefs, this did not end up being a holding penalty on fourth down, it definitely should have been, especially with, you know, looking right at this kind of stuff. You've watched it happen. Um, but yeah, this is, that's a huge play because that is a sack. You actually see uh, Mike Dana right here, kind of, you know, where's the whole, where's the, the call? Because that should have been a call 100% of the time, usually is. And I'm very upset that he was unable to pay that off. But that's the kind of thing that usually gets seen and usually pays off in the end. So it was unfortunate for the Chiefs in this situation. And we're going to close this off with a really, really, you know, another play from Mike Dana down here at the bottom of the defensive line. Just effort, speed, quickness, things that you don't necessarily think about Mike Dana. Again, that swipe, he's utilizing these situations really, really well. And the one thing in this situation that I think is a bit much like his, his previous swipe is he's seeing leverage, okay? So you have a puller coming out at him he's at your mercy you have a, a running back coming at you to block he's at your mercy as well so he's coming at you and he's reading the running back as he's going through this right so he sees him start to dip okay this is all like i said happening in a matter of nanoseconds in his mind but he sees the dip coming okay so he's gonna pretend like he's gonna brace it and try to take it on and right here he just says he sidesteps it and throws him behind him 
that's it's beautiful. It's literally art in motion for Mike Dana to get through that and come down and force this this ball to come out quicker. Like this is really really next level stuff. Understanding. I know it's not impressive because it's a running back, but it's all about reading everything in the moment. Okay, and in that moment, a lot of guys do panic. I think Mike Dana last year panicked in this kind of situation. But again, reading leverage as it's coming at you very important again getting down the line so just little tiny things like that doing your job getting down the line you create a ton of space for yourself too and, and it's just it's impressive he's starting to use all these tools to his advantage and he should have had more sacks in this game than he had herbert does a good job getting this ball away and it's an incompletion so again like this is all kinds of next level stuff it was really impressive for me to see mike dana go through that game and have the game that he did in a, you know, an offensive line that did a very good job of blocking Chris Jones, everybody up front. I think Chris Jones saw a ton of doubles and that lended to his inability to get off and on Justin Herbert, but hats off to Mike Dana coming in, coming in and having a very, really good game and just showing that you can bounce back from a bad game against Baltimore. Really, he's starting to use his intelligence understanding his strengths and playing to them so i hope you guys enjoy this in-depth look at mike dana's game you're gonna be able to see it free no matter what this is not for the subscriber this is for everybody so i hope you guys enjoyed it in the comment section i want you to give me one offensive player i know we just talked about mike dana but one offensive player that you expect to have a bounce back game against the Philadelphia Eagles. There were a ton of miscues on offense, so let's go ahead and kind of brighten it up a little bit and see what we can do for some of these guys going into the next game. Who's going to have the that bounce-back game from the Chiefs offense? Thank you guys so much. Please remember to hit that like, the sub, and the bell notification. Helps us out. Makes everybody get what they need to get. So I do appreciate it that you guys are just here having a good time at RGR. You guys have a great day. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.